Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a science fiction TV series, Altered Carbon Season 1 Episode 8. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. Tarkeshi can't believe that his sister betrayed him. It was her that reported to the Protectorate and told them where the Interstellar Warriors were. The Protectorate attacked the Interstellar Warriors camp with a virus before. The Warriors set off for the garrison. Tarkeshi's sister should be responsible for the deaths of the Warriors. Tarkeshi finds it hard to accept the fact that his sister did this. After all, his sister has always been a sweet little girl in his eyes. How could she be so cruel and cold-blooded? His sister also killed Quell, the leader of Interstellar Warriors whom he fell in love with. Tarkeshi trembles with rage when he thinks of Quell's death. He draws the samurai sword beside the bed and puts it to his sister's throat, asking her why she did that. Those warriors were like their families. Tarkeshi's sister thought Quell was leading them to fight a hopeless battle. There were only dozens of interstellar warriors. They would never be able to fight into the garrison. Quell would get all of them killed. Tarkeshi's sister didn't care about the warriors. The only person she cared about was her brother. To save Tarkeshi's life, she decided to reveal the information to the Protectorate. That's why the Protectorate knew where the camp was and attacked it with a virus to stop Quell's plan. Tarkeshi's sister got paid well for the valuable information. She has great business talents. When she got the money, she invested it in business rather than waste it. She has become a wealthy woman and built her own business empire in hundreds of years. She even got several sleeves of the noble and became a meth. Though she enjoys a comfortable life, she never forgets her brother. She has been looking for him. When she learned that Tarkeshi was in prison, she immediately approached Lawrence as a meth and persuaded Lawrence to bail Tarkeshi out and hire him as his private detective. Lawrence is very powerful. Besides the president, he is the only one who can bail out hardened criminals like Tarkeshi. Tarkeshi's sister spends so much effort to save Tarkeshi. She didn't expect that Tarkeshi isn't thankful for her and blames her for Quell's death. She feels heartbroken when Tarkeshi puts the sword to her throat. Meanwhile, Beauty is worried about Tarkeshi and looking for him in Bay City. Beauty and Tarkeshi were kidnapped to fight Drum and nearly killed there. They were saved by Tarkeshi's sister later. But Tarkeshi's sister only wants her brother for herself. She hates all the girls who are near Tarkeshi. Quell and Beauty are a thorn in her flesh. So Tarkeshi's sister took Tarkeshi back to her posh apartment in the Arium to rest, while Beauty was knocked out and dumped in the street. When Beauty wakes up, she is confused. She doesn't know where she is and what happened. What worries her most is Tarkeshi's disappearance. She worries that the man she just fell in love with would be kidnapped again and killed. To find Tarkeshi, Beauty returns to the police station to start the investigation. While Tarkeshi's sister was saving them in fight room, her blood was spattered on Beauty. Now Beauty just needs to go to the police station and examine the blood sample. Then she can know Tarkeshi's sister's identity. That's the only way to know who took Tarkeshi and how to find him. Before Beauty starts her investigation, the chief of the police asks Beauty to come to the office to have a word with her. He tells Beauty that she is on paid leave and hopes she can stop the investigation. When Beauty is investigating the ghost man and why Riker was framed, some of Meth's interests are involved. They are the people that the chief of the police doesn't want to mess up with. The chief worries that Beauty will take him down with her. So he asks Beauty to leave the police office and take some days off. However, Beauty is very stubborn. She seemingly agrees to leave, but she asks a colleague to help her take the blood sample on her hand privately. She needs to find out who is the mysterious woman that took Tarkeshi. While Beauty is waiting for the result of the blood test, Tarkeshi is staying in the area with his sister awkwardly. He is being threatened by his sister. The sister tells him that she has been Lauren's business partner. She needs Tarkeshi to close the case quickly, otherwise her business will be affected. She knows it is not easy to find the murderer of Lauren's. So she suggests Tarkeshi produce a culprit and frame someone. Then he can convince Lauren's the case is closed. Tarkeshi would not agree on such foul action. Seeing that Tarkeshi would not cooperate with her, Tarkeshi's sister calls the ghost man who is hired by her. The ghost man is a believer who prays to the gods. To him, people like Tarkeshi's sister who enjoys an unlimited lifespan and wealth are gods. That's why he is willing to work for her. Tarkeshi's sister is the ghost man's real boss. If Tarkeshi doesn't want to produce a culprit and close the case, his sister will send the ghost man to kill all Tarkeshi's friends in the United Nations Interstellar Protectorate. Tarkeshi has no choice but compromise. It is difficult to fabricate false evidence. Before he starts, he asks his sister for a top hacker to be his assistant. Speaking of hackers, the top one should be Lizzie's mother. Years ago, she was put into prison for hacking. 
Tarkeshi's sister uses her connections to bail Lizzie's mother out, so that she can help Tarkeshi fabricate false evidence. Due to the shortage of sleeves in prison, Lizzie's mother has to use a man's sleeve. She is sleeve sick when she is out of prison. Lizzie's father is more shocked when he sees the man who claims to be his wife. It takes a while for him to believe this. Tarkeshi explains that he needs his wife to run a hack. Later, Lizzie's parents enter the virtual world in the Raven Hotel to visit their daughter Lizzie, who is being treated by the receptionist. The family finally get together. But the mother changes her look, it doesn't reduce the joy of reunion. After spending some family time, Lizzie's mother fakes a blonde woman's sleeve restoration certificate upon Tarkeshi's request. It is key evidence in producing a culprit of Lauren's murder. When everything is ready, Tarkeshi sets off for Lauren's house with a story he makes up. Before he sees Lauren's, he meets Lauren's wife in the elevator. Lauren's wife still tries to convince Tarkeshi to give up the case. It is not too late to take her offer. After all, it is all men's dream to live on her private island. Tarkeshi rejects her again. The way she is talking to him makes him wonder if she is trying to cover up something. Tarkeshi once suspects that she killed Lauren's. Today, Tarkeshi is not coming here to capture the real murderer. He just comes here to sell Lauren's a lie and makes him believe that he has found the real murderer. The best scapegoat should be Lauren's lawyer who was born in a slum, but wants to change her fate by working for Lauren's. The lawyer has been dreaming of becoming one of the meths and living a better life. Lauren's often gives his employees all sorts of benefits due to the need for work. Lauren's once gave his lawyer a blonde sleeve. Tarkeshi presents the sleeve restoration certificate, which shows the lawyer had this sleeve fixed before Lauren's was killed. The blonde sleeve had several damages from being raped. It cost lots of money to fix the sleeve. The sleeve was given by Lauren's and it should be him to pay the bill. But according to the signature, the bill was signed by the lawyer herself. The only reason that she had to pay for herself is that she was fired by Lauren's. Tarkeshi analyses why she would be fired before Lauren's was killed. It is quite simple. Lauren's behaves like a decent man, but he has some morbid interests such as torturing and raping blonde women and even killing them. It is possible that one night before he was killed, he got drunk and raped the lawyer who was in the blonde sleeve at that time. They fell out and Lauren's fired the lawyer. The lawyer was revengeful. So she infected Lauren's stack with a deadly virus. She also planned to upload the virus to Lauren's satellite and infect the backup stack as well. In this way, she could kill Lauren's for good. It was a perfect plan. However, it was not easy to implement it. In the end, she just killed Lauren's temporarily and made it look like he committed suicide. But she didn't destroy the backup memory on the satellite. So when Lauren's came back to life, he lost 48 hours of memory. He doesn't remember he fired the lawyer and shot him. The story Tarkeshi makes up is perfectly logical and reasonable. He almost believes it himself. Lawrence is convinced that the lawyer was the killer. He immediately gets his own hack on the lawyer. He revokes her license to practice law and forbids her from going to the Arium again. The lawyer is never going to leave the ground and live the rest of her life in a slum. Now that Lawrence has got a satisfactory answer, he gives Tarkeshi the money and pardon as he promised. Tarkeshi is very happy that he finally gets freedom. Beauty colleague gets the result of the blood test. He suggests Beauty go to the sleeve manufacturing company Psychasic to get more information. Beauty goes there and finds many of Tarkeshi's sister's clones in the company. Those clones suddenly awake one by one and attack Beauty. Tarkeshi's sister can transfer her memory remotely to the clones. She just needs to copy her memory to her clone. The clone will attack Beauty. But those clones have no weapons. Beauty easily takes them down with a gun. While Beauty is killing the clones, she hears cries from the corner of the room. She follows the sound and finds a scared girl sitting on the floor. The little girl tells Beauty that Tarkeshi's sister traps her here and tortures her. Beauty feels sorry for the girl, so she gives the girl a hug. Beauty would never have thought that the girl is just a younger sleeve of Tarkeshi's sister. This is Angry Mustache Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your fun for today.